Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Missy. Thanks for joining me again. Today I'm making a layout for the Hip Kit Club and I'm using the 2015 March Hip Kits. And I'm using five pictures on this one. And if you look closely right there, you can see our cat photobombing the picture. And he's in all of these pictures. There's his tail. Um, my, I was trying to get some pictures of my kids on the patio one night, and the cat would not leave. So he just decided to photobomb every picture I took, and they turned out really cute and funny. So that's what I'm scrapping today. So this is clear gesso that I'm using here on this craft market sheet of uh, pattern paper and I'm taking some packaging from some embellishments there and using the yellow dilutions I think it's lemon zest and just making some messy yellow splatters or splotches whatever you want to call them on the background now in my previous video I tried this technique with watercolor and I clearly stated that I did not think it worked as well when you put gesso on the paper first. Well, I think that may be just the case with watercolor because I put gesso on this pattern paper and I'm doing this with the dilutions and it worked great. So maybe it's just the water color itself. Maybe it's so watery. This is more pigmented and it seemed to work really well with this gesso. And I was using cardstock before. This one's pattern paper. So I think it's just an experiment with every every separate project you do. Um, it worked really well here. So I wanted some yellow in the background on top of that wood grain paper. And um, so that's what I'm doing here. I just, I love that bright yellow. It's so pretty. And her shirt is yellow in the pictures. So um, that's going to match really well, I think. So that's just a scratch piece of cardstock. I try to keep all my scraps, especially if they're big enough to mat a photo. Um, which like that one was perfect so I uh, wanted a little bit of a border on that picture there so just went through my scraps I went through the pattern papers and I decided to go with the color scheme of that it's not pink but it's not red it's kind of like a corally pink it's really pretty from the we are memory keepers and I'm gonna pair it with that bright teal paper right there from crate paper and that's the same paper that I use to make my banners in the last layout so a little bit of this paper goes a long way I think so I'm just making my layers there and again I'm just cutting them and ripping them tearing the paper I love tearing the paper I wanted to bring in some black so I add in some of that black and white striped paper I think that's from crepe paper also this picture just cracks me up if you could see it up close you would laugh because the cat's eyes are open and he looks dead, but <laughs> he's very much alive. And his name's Michael. And um, that's a whole other story I'll have to tell you at a later time as to why his name's Michael. Um, so here I'm just going through all those small four pictures and trying to decide what I want to layer under them. And I decided to use some more of that teal paper there. I wanted to break up those four pictures right in a row a little bit. I didn't want to mat each one of them separately, so I just decided to mat one of them um, just to kind of make it pop right there in the little in the row. Um, I didn't want too much going on because there's so many pictures already going on in the in the layout, but I did want to kind of break up that line of pictures so. I backed that one with a little bit of that pink paper and I wanted to bring in the black and white stripes again but I didn't really know where to put it with all those four pictures so I just made a strip at the bottom there so it kind of balances out the black factor in the layout so I stick them all down I popped that one up with some pop dots since it's backed and it's a little bit different just to break up the monotony of four pictures right in a row Paige loves to grab the cat's tail, and the cat doesn't care. She was after the cat this day. He wouldn't leave, so she just decided to chase him around. She was grabbing his tail, squeezing it. She tried to put it in her mouth at one point, but I did not let that happen. She would if I let her. 
All right, so I decided at the bottom that I needed a little bit more yellow, um, something between the pictures and that teal, teal color paper. So I uh, took some cardstock and just ripped a little strip out and used some of that yellow dilutions just to make a little tiny strip there, just to give it a little something there at the bottom. That's one of the Project Life cards, and I cut it out thinking I was going to use it on my first project and never did. So here I'm just t uh, tearing it and cutting it because I wanted to use the top part on the top and the bottom part on the bottom. So here I get another idea, and this time I break out the white gesso, and um, I was kind of stuck at this point, and then I saw Irit post something on the member forum about mixing last month's dilutions with this month's distress paint. The bright blue, I think it's Calypso Teal from the February kits, mixed with that cracked pistachio distress paint from the March kits to create an entirely different color. And so once I saw that, I was literally working on this layout and I got that idea and I thought, oh, I'm gonna do that, it would be perfect. So here I, I just decided to practice. So I mixed the yellow and the teal and I got that really bright grass green, which is not the color I wanted. So I took the cracked pistachio and mixed that with the tulip, tulip, so calypso teal, I'm combining words here, and um, smushed it down and I really liked that color. And it wound up matching that uh, teal color perfectly. So I decided to do that and I wanted to drown out, or not drown out, but kind of fade out some of that wood grain. So that's why I put the white gesso on there to kind of fade the pattern out a little bit to make this blue or teal color stand out a little more. So I blotted it one time so it wouldn't be so much paint. And then I hoped for the best. I kind of cringed here. I thought, oh, this is gonna mess the whole thing up. But it wound up working out really nicely and I was very happy with how it turned out because I think that was the one thing that was missing um, was some of some more blue and some more paint can't have enough paint right so thank you Irit for giving me this idea right at the perfect moment when I needed it it was great and her layout I've seen it because she showed us some of it on the hip kit team um, page and it's coming soon this week it's so pretty She's awesome. I love her work. And um, so I was very happy to see that she was experimenting and gave me this idea. So it worked out perfectly. I love that teal and the yellow together. I just really like it. So the name of this layout is going to be Cat Photobomb because I really couldn't think of anything else to name it. So I cut Cat and some black cardstock on my cameo. Now here, I just decided that the bottom of the layout needed a little bit more of that pink pop of color. So I just took a gelato that matched kind of closely and rubbed some color on the bottom of that. You can't really see it from here, but you can see it in person. And it's real subtle. It's not too, not too bright, but it does give a little bit of pink down there at the bottom. That pink fresh arrow was perfect. The color matched, so I just stapled that to the top. And now I'm using those craft thickers, and I'm going to spell out photobomb. Got to glue that down first, though. And I, I like to start from the end of the word, especially in a case like this, where it's a long word. And if I started from the left going to the right, I really wouldn't know how far to start. So, and I've seen a lot of people do that. And, it just makes sense to start at the right so you know exactly where it's gonna end up and I use one of those chipboard arrows from crate paper to point right to the cat's head it's so funny <laughs> oh Michael so I wrote the date on there and stuck it in there. I was gonna use my date stamper but it was just too wide for that little space so I just wrote it with my pen decide to adhere that little pink circle with the gold star and then I picked one of the exclusive die cuts the craft color one with the camera and I can't remember if that came in the main kit or the project life kit because there's two packs ones in each kit and they're very similar uh, a little bit different so I can't remember which one that's from but if you look on the hip kit 
website, you'll, you can see each one and which, which kit it comes in. So then I decided that the right needed a little bit more yellow because the picture covered up most of that top yellow. So I just added a little bit more there. I played around with this other circle die cut and could not make it work anywhere. So it did not make it onto the page. I wanted to add a little bit more pops of black. So I took my pen and just traced over the um, little Project Life card tag just to kind of make it stand out a little more. Added another chipboard arrow. I wasn't sure where I was going to put this one. It wound up going right there. Oh, I added some stitching. I totally just noticed that. I always do that off camera because of where my uh, sewing machine is plugged in. It I kind of move it every time I need it and it just does not fit under the camera. So I always do that with the camera paused. And so I uh, just added some stitching down at the top, the bottom, under the word photobomb and a little bit on the fourth picture down there where the small pictures are. And I added some black thread underneath that little camera circle there. And now I'm just fiddling with more things, gluing things down. And while I have a minute here, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel. Thank you for all of the sweet comments. I'm literally blown away at how many people are giving me such great feedback. I was kind of nervous about doing process videos and I'm just so, so excited that, that everybody likes my videos. I'm just like shocked every time. So I'm just, I want to say thank you. I'm very grateful for, for you taking the time to watch them and to leave comments and things. I've been watching so many of you for so long and I'm so glad I finally decided to learn how to do this. And now that I've got the hang of it, it's really fun. And um, everybody here in the YouTube community has been very welcoming and very supportive. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you who are watching because this makes me feel awesome. It makes me want to keep doing it. And I just, I love scrapbooking. I love being crafty and playing with paint and paper and things like that. It's, it's one of my therapies. I try to do something scrapbook related every day. It keeps my brain sane, if you know what I mean. I'm sure many of you can relate to that. So just wanted to say thank you. So I added some crate paper sentiment stickers around the page and those shiny gold stickers are from my mind's eye. And I just added a couple of the shiny gold circles because there's some other shiny gold elements going on in the pink fresh elements and those gold uh, chipboard arrows. So I just used my T-square ruler to draw some, some um, lines. I'm adding my journaling. And that's one thing I can say that's my least favorite thing about gesso is it does get kind of gritty especially the Liquitex clear gesso and it's kind of hard to write your journaling on there sometimes but it looks it looks okay it's just kind of gritty and you know makes your writing not as clear as it could be so I'm gluing um, all my thread down and adding some black color shine and that's gonna finish it up so I hope you guys enjoyed this here comes the final pictures and there's the cat photo bomb layout. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So here comes some close-ups and make sure you visit hit kip, hit bleh, hip kit club dot net. So thanks and I hope to see you next time. Bye.